This is David Fanella, and I'm pleased to present to you a brief overview of my latest book on structural loads. Like the versions prior to this one, the main purpose of this publication is to assist in the proper determination of structural loads in accordance with the 2012 edition of the International Building Code and the 2010 edition of the ASCE 7 standard Minimum Design Loads for Buildings and Other Structures. In-depth coverage of all the loads shown on your screen are contained in this publication, including completely new sections on soil lateral loads and ice loads, detailed discussions on live load reduction, as well as strength design and allowable stress design load combinations for different types of structural members subject to different types of load effects are also provided. Readers familiar with previous editions of this publication will immediately recognize that the content of the book has increased substantially. More of the underlying theory and background information for all load types have been included to help the reader better understand and correctly apply the provisions in everyday practice. For the same reasons, the book contains numerous flowcharts and completely worked out design examples which guide the reader through the intricate requirements in the code. This example is given in Chapter 4 of the book, and it covers the determination of snow loads for this one-story warehouse using the flowchart that was given in the previous slide. These examples were formulated to illustrate provisions that are not commonly covered in other resources. Many new figures and design aids have been included to help understand complex code provisions. For example, this figure illustrates snow drifting requirements for adjacent buildings that are separated. In Chapter 5, wind loads are determined for the main wind force resisting system and the components and cladding of the same one-story warehouse. For comparison purposes, pressures are calculated using all of the completely updated wind load provisions in the code. Earthquake loads are covered in Chapter 6. Included is information on how to distribute such loads vertically and horizontally through a structure. This example in the book illustrates the determination of seismic shear forces in a diaphragm. Provision for flood loads are given in Chapter 7. Design aids and examples illustrate the proper determination of the required types of flood loads. New to this edition of the book is Chapter 8, which covers load paths. It is very important to understand the paths that gravity and lateral loads take through a structure. Illustrated here are the gravity load paths for a conventional structure with slabs, beams, columns, walls, and footings. Shown on your screen are the load paths for cord forces due to wind in a wood frame building. Typical gravity and lateral load paths in buildings made of other material types, such as concrete and steel, are provided in this chapter as well. Also new to this edition of the book are problem sections at the ends of most chapters. The solutions to these problems can be downloaded as a separate document from ICC's website. These problems can be used to practice for licensing exams or simply to gain a better understanding of the code provisions. The information needed to order this book from ICC is shown on your screen. Thank you for your interest.